Good morning, friends. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Mary's online service on this Palm Sunday, as the Church commemorates the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. And friends, if you are one of those who are visiting us for the very first time, uh, do visit our website later on and introduce yourself to us. We would love to get to know you better. Friends, there is a special significance to Palm Sunday, for even as the crowds were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. We know that Jesus came that 2,000 years ago in the Jerusalem, not to reign as an earthly king, but to die for us, sinners like you and me, so that we may enter uh, into his holy presence and gain eternal life with him, trusting in him, believing in him to save us. And so friends, as we now uh, join together in the first hymn, please rise with me as we sing the first hymn, All Glory, Lord and Honor. Friends, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Brothers and sisters, the scriptures urge us to acknowledge our many sins and not to conceal them in the presence of God our Heavenly Father, but to confess them with a penitent and obedient heart so that we may be forgiven through His boundless goodness and mercy. Let us therefore draw near to the throne of our gracious God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, and confess our sins together. And together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbours, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent for our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. 
Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of a sinner, but rather that he turn from his wickedness and beef, he pardons and absorbs all them that truly repent and believe his holy gospel. For this reason, let us ask him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that our lives may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Old Testament reading from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, 9 to 13. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you double. For I have bent Judah as my bow. I have made Ephraim its arrow. I will stir up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and wield you like warrior's sword. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm reading for today is taken from Psalm 118, beginning to read from verse 19 to 29. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them, and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray. Give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. By the festival sacrifice with cords, up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give, th give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Today's New Testament reading is taken from John chapter 12, verses 12 to 26. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. 
So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing? Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honour him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our God finds its yes in His own Son blessings to His people come in abundance through the one in Christ God's glory is revealed His grace his faithfulness is shown, and so we live in certain hope. The God of truth, our fortress strong. As foretold, the servant came, sacrificed to rid our shame. God's glory is revealed His grace, His faithfulness is shown And so we live in certain hope The God of truth, our fortress strong By God's word the Christ did come Great King David's greatest son, line of Judah, King of Kings, he whose rule will never end. In Christ, God's glory is revealed, his grace, his faithfulness is shown.
Uh, good morning, sisters and brothers. Uh, we're looking at John chapter 12, verses 12 to 25. John chapter 12, verses 12 to... Actually, it's verses 12 to 26. Uh, let me lead us in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can uh, gather around your word uh, this morning, uh, and we pray that you speak to us uh, by your Spirit, through your word, uh, and help us to see and to love and to follow Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. It is now a week before Easter Sunday, the first Easter Sunday, and it's Passover time. Pilgrims from all around the country, and indeed all around the region, are flocking to Jerusalem. Some time back, at a place called Bethany, a nearby village, Jesus had raised his friend Lazarus from the dead in front of many witnesses. Many people had believed in him, and the Jewish leaders were worried. The high priest Caiaphas prophetically said to them, It is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. Now, he had meant it in a utilitarian way. Better we kill Jesus and then, then let him cause trouble and the whole country get into problems. Right? But John, inspired by the Holy Spirit, tells us that he did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. Yesterday, Jesus was at Bethany again. Large crowds had come to see him there because of Lazarus, but today Jesus is coming to Jerusalem. There had been all kinds of speculation earlier about whether or not he had come, but now in verse 12 of John 12, a large crowd has, that has come to the feast hears that Jesus is coming to Jerusalem, and they're all excited. And so in verse 13, they take, a, a, they take branches of palm trees and they go out to meet him. Uh, they're going to acknowledge that he is the king of Israel. But the palm branches hint what kind of king they, they think he is. You see, palm branches were at the time a nationalist symbol. Uh, 170 years before this, uh, when Simon the Maccabee had driven out Syrian forces from Jerusalem, the Jews celebrated with music and waving palm branches. So maybe the crowd thinks that Jesus might do the same and liberate Jerusalem from the Romans. What do they cry out when they see him? Verse 13, Hosanna, which originally meant, save us now. Though it was used by then, uh, but by then it was used, it may have just been, we praise you, we acclaim you. Uh, they announce the messianic blessing on Jesus. They say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Now, what they're singing is, in fact, Psalm 118. Psalm 118 is about the stones that the builders rejected, which becomes the cornerstone. Jesus was rejected by the Jewish leadership, yet he's about to become the most important figure in God's kingdom. Right, Psalm 18 uh, continues, it says, Save us, we pray. That's Hosanna. O Lord, O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. You see what they're doing? They are saying Jesus is the Messiah. The Psalm 18 Messiah. And this Messiah had raised Lazarus from the dead. And he would raise and restore Israel. So what does Jesus do? Well, in verse 14, Jesus finds a young donkey and sits on it. Right, back in 1 Kings uh, 133, uh, Solomon had ridden on David's mule to be anointed king. So you see the expectation? The people are saying, you're the king. And Jesus is implying, yes, I am. But not the kind of king you are thinking about. And we realize this when we look at the prophecy of Zechariah that John alludes to in verse 15, uh, where it says, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Now, if you go back to the Old Testament passage that John is reminding us about, right, it's a prophecy about what would happen when the Messiah arrives at Jerusalem. Uh, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey, and then it continues, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim 
and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations, and his rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Notice something very interesting here. This Messiah comes to Jerusalem in a humble way on a donkey. He comes to his people Israel. He will speak peace to the nations. He will rule the world from sea to sea. And yet, he won't achieve this by chariots and war horses. So Jesus is coming to Jerusalem as this prophesied king on the first Palm Sunday. And John tells us about three groups of people who are there who see him. The disciples, the crowd, and the Pharisees. The disciples we know love and follow Jesus, right? They're, they're fully involved, they're fully caught up in all this, but they don't, they don't really appreciate what's going on yet. Verse 16, now it says they don't understand these things at first. Right? It's only later when Jesus is glorified, they remember these things, and then they remember that these things were written about him uh, and, and these things that had been written about him and done to him. Now, friends, I wonder if any of us are like the disciples. Right? Uh, we know the Bible stories, including this one. We don't really understand what's going on and why, because we don't know how they connect with the Old Testament. And more importantly, we don't know how they connect with the death and resurrection of Jesus. Because Jesus' death and resurrection, that's where everything's going. In fact, that's where the, the whole Bible story up to this point is going. Right? The events of Palm Sunday, the prophecies of the Old Testament, they actually only make sense in light of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And if you don't get that, it's very hard to make sense of everything else. After Jesus is glorified, the disciples will remember what's written in the Old Testament. They'll understand how that and this event is linked with the death and resurrection of Jesus. Then they'll get it. They will see that Jesus is the king from the Old Testament, that the king is going to save Israel and rule the world, but they will also realize that he's going to be glorified, not by commanding chariots and war horses, but by dying for the sins of his people and rising again. And the death and resurrection of Jesus is what makes the rest of the Bible story make sense. And we make sense of the Bible story too by understanding the death and resurrection of Jesus. Well, the second group of people here are the crowds. Uh, contrary to public opinion, popular opinion, uh, these are not the same people who later demand his crucifixion. But there are two groups of people in the crowds. Uh, there are those people in verse 17 uh, who have been with Jesus and who were with Jesus when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead. Right? Uh, that's, that's not something you easily forget. Right? These are all the people who were there uh, at that time, and they continue to bear witness about it. And so when Jesus comes back to Jerusalem, or Jesus comes to Jerusalem, they claim as the, him as the king of Israel and call on him to save them. There are other people in the crowd, in verse 18, who are those who go to meet Jesus because they have heard that he had done that sign. Right? They weren't with Jesus themselves when Jesus raised Lazarus, but they heard about it from the people who were. They received their witness. And they also waved the palm branches and acclaimed him as king and cried out for his salvation. Now, this palm-waving crowd, consisting of two groups of people, point forward to another crowd. In the book of Revelation, one of the pictures that we are given of the end is that of a great multitude that no one can number from every tribe and language and people and nation. We see that in Revelation 7. And in Revelation 7, verse 9 and 10, we see this, this great multitude from all these nations clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, crying out, Salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And brothers and sisters, if we belong to Jesus, if we believe in him, then we are part of that crowd. Like the crowd on the first Palm Sunday, the crowd on that last day will have two kinds of people. Those who saw the signs that Jesus did, like the raising of Lazarus, all the other signs in John's Gospel, who are witnesses of the resurrection, in fact. And then there are those who heard about it from them, who received their witness. John, who wrote this book, is one of the people who saw. You and I, who read it, 
are one of the people who received his witness. In fact, he wrote this book so that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing we may have life in his name. That's what he tells us. Some people saw the signs. Some people received the witness of those who did. But either way, they were there in the crowd. And either way, those who believe will one day be in that multitude to acclaim Jesus as King and proclaim his salvation. The third group of people here are the Pharisees. These are the Jewish religious leaders, men known for their piety and morality and fastidious keeping of the law and tradition. But look what they say to each other about Jesus in verse 19. They say, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. You know, what does that show about their hearts? They know about Lazarus. They can see Jesus fulfilling prophecy before their eyes. They should be acclaiming Jesus with the crowds, but they're not. Because they view him not as the, the king sent by God, but as a political rival. Uh, this is about the salvation of the world, the fulfillment of God's promises, the end of the age. But they've made it about them and their petty politics. And they take the Son of God, who became man to save the human race, has their competition. It would be laughable if it were not so serious. Uh, friends, you and I have been entrusted with the gospel of Jesus. You and I have the message that he died for us and rose again. You and I are to take this message to the world so that men, women, and children from all over the world might be saved. God forbid that we should let petty rivalries and exaggerated sense of self-importance or our own inflated egos get in the way. Let us put all that down at Jesus' feet and humbly and sincerely serve him. Which brings us to the last section of our passage. When the Pharisees saw the Jewish crowd acclaiming Jesus, they, they said somewhat hyperbolically that the world had gone after him. But they spoke better than they knew because just after this, John draws our attention to some other people who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. These people were, in verse 20, Greeks. Now, presumably they've seen what's happened, and they go to Philip. Well, Philip's got a Greek name, and he's from Bethsaida in Galilee, which is a Greeky kind of area, so it makes sense they would approach him. And they say to him politely, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Now, sometimes when outsiders are interested in Jesus, they, they will look for Christians who they can identify with in some way and talk to them. And what a great privilege, isn't it, to be able to help someone meet Jesus. You know, there will be people out there for whom you're just the right person to introduce Jesus to them. Well, Philip tells Andrew, who's also from Bethsaida, and together they go and tell Jesus. But John doesn't tell us whether Jesus meets the Greeks or not. Well, we're curious to know, but... It's not important for the point that John's making. What he wants us to know is what Jesus says in response. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. You see, the Greeks are Gentiles, right? non-Jews. And so what we see here is the Gentiles are already starting to come. Right? The nations are knocking at the door. But Jesus knows that if he's going to be the king of the Jews and the Gentiles, he will need to be glorified. That is, he will need to die and be raised. A little bit later on, he will say, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. And he's talking about being lifted up on the cross. He will have to die for both Jews and Greeks to reconcile them to the Father and then so to reconcile them to each other to make the one new people of God. He's going to have to go to the cross if he's going to have that multitude that no one can number from every tribe and language and people and nation gathered around the throne. In the words of John that we have seen before, he would die not only for the nation, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. Jesus is going to rule the nations, not by chariots and war horses, but by his sacrificial death and resurrection. So he's going to have to die. And so he continues in verse 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That's going to be Jesus. He's going to be like that one seed sown in the ground that then produces 
much fruit. He will die and be buried, but the result will be a great harvest of Jew and Gentile. Jesus continues in verse 25, Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Jesus was willing to give up his life. He was willing to die for our sins in our place, bearing the just judgment of God so that we can be saved. He was willing to be buried, but he would be raised as the King of Israel and the King of the whole world. He was willing to give up his life to keep it for eternal life. But that's not just Jesus. Notice he says here, whoever loves his life loses it. And he clarifies this in verse 26. He says, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. Yes, Jesus went to the cross as our representative. He died on our behalf. Yes, Jesus went to the cross as our substitute. He took our place. Yes, Jesus went to the cross to, to be glorified and in doing so draw all people to himself. That's the objective work of what he did for us. But in doing that, he also set us an example. And if we are to serve him, we must follow him. He was willing to suffer for the sake of the gospel, and we must be willing to do so as well. He was willing to be unjustly treated, and we must be willing to do so as well. He was willing to give up his life to be the seed that dies so the harvest can follow, so that people from all nations will be in the great multitude in that last day, and we must be willing to do so as well. That is part and parcel of serving Jesus. And notice how Jesus says, those who hate their lives in this world will keep it for eternal life. He's not talking here about being in despair. He's saying, if we sacrifice our life for the sake of the gospel, eternal life is ours. As Jesus was raised, so will we be. As Jesus was glorified, so will we be. For Jesus continues, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. As it was all worthwhile for Jesus in the end, so shall it be for those who serve him. And so, brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Palm Sunday today, and as we acclaim Jesus as the King who went to Jerusalem to give up his life for us, here's what God is asking us. Are we willing to follow Jesus? Are we willing to give up everything for him? Are we willing to be like that seed that dies in order to produce much fruit? Now, what that looks like is going to look different for each one of us. Right? Our, our recent apprentices or interns at the cathedral have, have given up careers in dentistry, law, and management psychology so they can tell people about Jesus. Many of our people have less money to spend or invest because they prioritize giving for the gospel. Many of our leaders juggle work and family and ministry at the midst of stress, find ways of lovingly serving God and his people. Now, what it looks like is going to be different for all of us. Don't compare. But if we follow Jesus, if we serve him, there will be opportunity costs involved. Some of us will give up our ambitions. Some of us will give up our place on the career ladder. Some of us will live with less money. Some of us will live with less leisure time. Some of us will give up ungodly relationships or habits. Some of us may have to give up our freedom. Some of us might have to give up our lives. Following Jesus comes at a cost. Jesus makes that clear. So if you're paying the cost, don't look back. It's worth it. Now, it doesn't mean we don't evaluate what we do from time to time under the, the broader banner of following Jesus and adjusting things accordingly. Of course, we need to do that. Circumstances may change. How we serve may change. But don't think, ah, yeah, if only I wasn't following Jesus, I could have that, or I could enjoy this, or I could do the other. No, no, don't look back. Don't even look around. Look forward. It may not feel great now. Suffering and sacrifice are not fun. But it's worth it in the end. It's worth it because we will be raised with Jesus. Where I am, Jesus said, there my servant will be also. The Father will honor you as he honored the Son. And you, together with all who came to Christ or grew in Christ through your sacrifice, will be there in that great multitude on the last day. And you shall stand in robes of white with palm branches in your hand, giving thanks to our King who rode in Jeru into Jerusalem to save us. And you will say, Salvation belongs to our God 
who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. You will enjoy the shelter of God's presence, and every tear shall be wiped away. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be our honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Soar in ages past, light in the distant dawn. The king is found in agony, rise to life again. And in his name, a saving word release from every stain. And in the darkness, we have heard this is God's only plan. This is God's only the Son of God now in the flesh He seeks to save the lost A king who left his majesty Behind it to set us free And in his name a saving word Released from every stain And in the darkness we have heard words to speak Jesus Christ is Lord and as he breaks the hardest heart he's worshipped and adored and in his name a saving word release from every stain and in the darkness we have heard this is God's only Good morning, Church. We have now come to the time of prayer. Let's pray together. We will start by praying for our nation. Almighty God, we commit to you our young Dipetuan Agong and the current government of Malaysia. As the sovereign ruler over all creation, stir the hearts of those in authority under you to have compassion on the poor and marginalised of our land. Let every man be treated with dignity and honour, regardless of race, religion or background, as fittingly made in your image. In your mercy, refrain acts of evil that benefits the interests of a few at the expense of the people. Instead, put in place wise and godly men and women who can advance the good to protect and support the nation. 
help them have the courage to always do what is legal and upright, so that their works of righteousness will be honourable to you. May those who practice injustice come to hear and experience the salvation that Jesus offers. We ask that our freedom of religion continue to be protected and for tolerance and respect to be practiced so that every Malaysian can exercise their faith without fear. May the Christian communities fight hostility and mistrust through acts of love, compassion and kindness in order to win many to the truth. We repent of the ways which we have failed to respect and honour those in positions of power. Help us choose our words wisely when we speak about them and help us give them their due honour as required by you. As Christians, help us to actively engage with those from other cultures and show them grace despite our differences. For the COVID vaccination, we pray that more Malaysians will sign up for the upcoming vaccination program and that the Christian community will show their support for this effort by registering for the vaccine when available. We recognise medical advancement and healthcare as an expression of your goodness in the form of common grace. We thank you that all these function together to bring a measure of good and protection for our lives. As we consider the critical issue of vaccination, help us remember that this decision is not just about our personal needs alone, but involves our responsibility to the greater community in which we live in. We have a duty to love our neighbour as ourselves, as taught by our Lord Jesus in the second greatest commandment. Therefore, we desire to do what is most helpful and necessary to protect the weak and the sick in our communities. For those of us who struggle with the concern of its effectiveness and consequences, help us make wise decisions based on the full knowledge available to us. Keep our conscience clear as we seek to put our trust in your hands. Help us to watch out for fear-mongering without reason and to reject the form of extreme views that may increase stubbornness and stir division within the church. And for those who struggle with the specifics of how healing ought to be, remind us that it is the healer we put our trust in and not the means. The demonstration of our faith actually comes from submitting ourselves to your will and not our own. So grant us zeal directed by knowledge. Give us clear minds to exercise reasoning pertaining to this matter, so that alongside our hearts and soul, we may love you also with our minds, that being the first and greatest commandment of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now pray for the church. We begin by praying for our own diocese, the Diocese of West Malaysia, under the Episcopal Ministry of Bishop Stephen Abaro. May you give him the ability to keep watch over the flock which you have appointed him as overseer. Please enable him to be good and gentle as a shepherd to the church, like Christ is. Grant him strength to protect the sheep from danger that may come in to harm the church. And from within, help him watch out for men who may arise and distort the truth in order to draw disciples away. Grant our bishop wisdom to be on guard for these things and further to contend for the faith. May the diocese continue to bring reform that emphasise on the sufficiency of Christ as Saviour, scripture for salvation, and justification by grace through faith. We pray that our churches will grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and Saviour as they rest on his perfect and complete work. We also pray for the Diocese of Kuching, who recently conducted their 31st Diocese and Synod event online with success. We ask for the provision of financial needs to help support the various ministries within the diocese. May you bring more generous givers to contribute to the work of the kingdom and for the gospel. And now we pray for our own cathedral needs. We remember our fellow clergymen and ministry workers 
We commit them to you as they labour tirelessly to serve the needs of the church, to care and to protect the flock. We ask for an increase of gospel workers to better serve the needs of our various and growing congregations. That through the many different gifts and maturity of these workers, you would plant, water and make the gospel grow. May you provide more able men and women who can come alongside in labouring together for your kingdom and to shepherd the sheep at St Mary's. We rejoice to hear that physical church will soon be reopened for services. This means that we will be able to finally meet each other face to face again. And we joyfully look forward to seeing those we have not seen for a long time. Grant us grace to be mindful with our social distancing responsibility so that we will not increase the risk of infections by our gathering. We pray for a steady group of volunteers to help support the various services. May they serve sacrificially in view of your mercy and may their service be motivated by the grace you have shown them. And for some of us who have become too comfortable with meeting online, help us make every effort to consider coming to church again so that we may not neglect the fellowship we need to be in to engage and encourage one another. As we gather, we pray that we will be humble, gentle and patient, bearing with one another in love. Through the Spirit, enable us to keep the bond of peace, just as we are called to one body with one faith and one hope. Help us think of ways to motivate one another towards acts of godliness and use our words and examples to bear fruit in each other's lives. Despite the reopening, we are aware that many may not be able to attend for various reasons, such as age and health restrictions. We want to remember this part of the body of Christ and think fondly of them, acknowledging their desire for fellowship, their faithful attendance in the past, as well as their years of service and contribution. They are very much a part of us. We pray that they will remain spiritually strong and vigorous as they bear with the limitation of the pandemic. May their faith remain confident in you as they choose to patiently wait at home. We cherish, love and value each of them, despite not being able to see them for now. We pray for those who find themselves already weary and barely hanging on as they depend on the feeding of online meetings alone. Lord Jesus, thank you for the offer to come to you and to bring our burden before you and the promise that you will give us rest. Strengthen our hearts to not falter despite the limitation that comes with online fellowship. As our longing for the earthly church increases, direct us to the vision of the heavenly church where distancing and separation shall be no more. In the meantime, grant us patience and perseverance so that we may learn to sincerely love and care for one another. Lord Jesus, during this season of Lent, saturate our hearts with the gospel and help us focus all our energy and being to worship and adore you. Whatever way we choose to remember you by, help us do so in honour of your name. When we fast, intensify our hunger for you and fuel our hope in anticipation of the coming eternal celebration. Give us a deep heart to repent and desire for holiness, to want less of ourselves and more of you each day. Reveal to us our many idols and the destructiveness they bring. Then grant us grace to repent from them. In return, we ask that you soak our hearts with your everlasting joy and beauty so that we may be filled and satisfied. By the richness of your grace, continue to do the good work of renewing us in your likeness. And as you do so, compel our hearts and spirits to rejoice in you always. For you have forgiven us and make us your beloved people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the suffering we commend to you fatherly goodness 
all who are anxious and distressed in mind or body. Comfort and relieve them in their need. Give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of their troubles. We pray especially for Grace Esther and Prem Kumar, for Grace who is battling with cancer, and for Prem who is nursing a bad hand injury. May you strengthen both in your love. Grant them to know that your presence is with them always. Fill them with peace and help them rejoice in the hope of the resurrection beyond this life. Lastly, we give thanks for the life of Caroline Tinker, we pray that even as the family grieves and remember her, that you comfort them with the knowledge that those who died in the faith of Christ will surely rise again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Please spend a few quiet moments now praying for those people known to you and for things that may have happened over the past few days since the recording of these online prayers. Sisters and brothers, let us pray the collect for Palm Sunday together. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards mankind sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Uh, good morning again, sisters and brothers. Uh, thanks again for joining us for this online service and a special welcome to those friends who are new, uh, who have joined us today. Thank you for coming. Uh, if you're new today, can you please fill out a connection card? Uh, let us know that you've been here. How do you do that? Uh, well, you can go to stmarys.my slash connect uh, or to our website uh, and fill out the card there. Right? If you're uh, someone with children or grandchildren, you want to know about our kids' church or our youth programs, then let us know on the connection card and we'll get back to you about that. Uh, our on-site services uh, are starting, uh, well, this morning. Uh, if you're on our emailing mailing list, you'll know all about it. So uh, if you're not, then please go to stmarys.my slash subscribe uh, and, uh, and make sure you, you're able to keep up to date uh, with all these things. Well, this morning, as I said, we have our first uh, on-site Sunday services right for 2021. Uh, they're not being live streamed today, so it gives us a chance to iron out any issues. Uh, but from Thursday night onwards, uh, there will be live stream services from the cathedral. 
Uh, in most of those live stream services, we'll just still have a little bit of recorded content uh, to remind us that, that people still participating from home uh, and they're just as much as part of the congregation uh, as the people who are there. So uh, we'll have a little bit of both, but, but mainly it'll be live streamed. Right? So when we live stream from next Sunday, we will have two English services. There'll be a liturgical service at 10 a.m. and a contemporary or smack service at 5 p.m. Right, you're welcome to come online uh, to either or to both. On Good Friday, we will also have two services. Uh, the liturgical service will be live streamed from the cathedral at 10 a.m. Uh, the smack service won't be a live stream service. It will be a Zoom only service, and that will be at 8 p.m. Uh, you'll get the links for those services on your email. Uh, please uh, feel free uh, to invite your friends. This week, we will also be having on site services at 7.30 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Right, so if you can't book in for Good Friday or Easter Sunday because they're full, come for one of the on-site services uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Right, the services on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights won't be live streamed, but the Thursday one is Monday, Thursday, and that will be live streamed. Right? Booking for the services are by our website, uh, but if you uh, can't use a computer, uh, you can call the church office during office hours, and Mrs. Nessamani will be pleased to help you do the booking. Right, the number to call is 03-2692-8672. 2692-8672. Bookings for uh, any Sunday, they open on noon, the Friday, that is nine days before that, uh, and they close on the Friday, that is two days before that, right? or, or when the service is fuller, uh, depending which comes first. Right? So weekday services also will close two days before the service or when they're full. So please book to come in uh, 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 when, when it's safe for you to do so. Uh, just register for once during the week uh, and maybe once on the weekend right? so, that, so that more people can come. Uh, all the details of our online and on-site services uh, for Passion Week and Easter can be found at stmarys.my slash Easter. The Kids Church team have prepared a series of Easter activities beginning with a talk at 3 p.m. on Good Friday, uh, activities to join at 3 p.m. on Saturday, and a talk uh, during the Easter Sunday service at 10 a.m. So all these things will share the gospel message in a way that's engaging for children aged 3 to 12. Uh, so go later to St. Mary's.my slash kids uh, and you'll get more details. The last couple of weeks, I've invited you to participate in our special online Easter greeting by recording the acclamation, Christ is risen, and the response, He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Right, and you were going to send it uh, to be made into a short video uh, for our service and social media. Can I just say that very few people have done this so far, and I know I'm uh, among guilty ones who have not done it yet, uh, but putting it together takes time, so uh, we really need to get it done if we're going to, if we're going to uh, actually do this. All right, so... Uh, uh, the closing date is on Tuesday, uh, but can I encourage you, if we really want to do this together, let's do the recording right after church or, or after the post-church uh, meetings. Uh, let's get, most of us get it done today. Uh, details of how to do it are at stmarys.my slash Easter greetings. Uh, oh, sorry, slash Mary, stmarys.my slash Easter greeting. Uh, and uh, yeah, let, 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 let's do this. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a few moments to greet each other uh, by using the chat or comment section on YouTube, Facebook, or Zoom. Uh, virtual Tea Terrace will be open right after church uh, this morning. Uh, if you'd like to join, just go to stmarys.my slash VTT, uh, and that will take you to a Zoom room where you can come in and say hello to the different people who have been in church with us this morning online. Uh, and our guest today will be Dr. Mei Tan. Uh, she'll be there to chat about the ministry at Agape School uh, and to answer any questions you might have uh, about that. So uh, do go along uh, to the Virtual Tea Terrace. Our Cathedral Annual General Meeting will be held on Saturday, the 24th of April, 2021, at 11 a.m. in the ballroom of the Royal Selangor Club. All right? So if you're on the electoral roll of the cathedral and you join before the 31st of December, 2020, please keep the date free. Uh, if you want to check and see if you're on the electoral roll, please call the office uh, during office hours from Monday to Friday. All right? Same numbers I gave just now. From Monday to Friday this week, you can call to make sure your name is on the roll and that your details are up to date. Right? That's especially important if you've filled out the form but you haven't checked before if your name is really there. So please check this week right? so we can solve any problems and then by the end of the week we'll have a roll 
that is ready for the AGM. I also note that the Golden Circle, CWF and Young Adults Fellowship are having their AGM on the weekend before this. Uh, details are there in your order of service, uh, so if that's relevant for you, uh, please do make a note and come along. May I please remind you to support the Cathedral Ministry by online giving. Right? There are two ways to do it. Uh, you can do a direct transfer from your bank to the Cathedral, uh, or you can use the Boost app that's on your phone. Uh, details are at stmarys.my slash give, uh, but if you need more information, you can always call or email the Cathedral office. In our final hymn, we echo the acclamation of the crowd that first Palm Sunday, and we anticipate the song of the multitude uh, at the end of the age as we call each other to rejoice in King Jesus. Friends, we have come to the end of our service this morning, but not to the end of our worshipping and glorifying our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And I look forward to meeting up once again with you online next Sunday when we celebrate Easter Sunday when Jesus Christ rose triumphant from the dead. And friends, as we go, let's bless each other in the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. God bless you.